If you've ever made a 3D animation before, or did some 3D work, you know the names of the most popular 3D animation software, like Maya, Max, Blender, Houdini, and so on. These are the software you expect to find in studio pipelines. But here's the interesting thing. Big animation studios like Pixar don't rely entirely on the same commercial software that everyone else is using. They use them, but at least not as a flagship animation software. In 2012, with the release of the movie called Brave, Pixar quietly rolled out a new announced animation software called Presto. It wasn't a plugin, and it wasn't an upgrade to their old software. It was a complete rewrite of their core animation system for the first time in 25 years. And it changed how every Pixar film has been animated since then. So why do they have to reinvent the wheel, since we have capable software such as Maya? And how did they make a software more capable than Maya itself and other software? Or did they? When dealing with 3D assets, different formats, versions, clients, and teams, it is easy to lose track. In gaming, for instance, building assets and characters across a whole team is so hard to keep track of, and it costs time and money. Imagine sending the same files again and again, zipping and uploading between animators, VFX artists, compositors, and so on. But Blueberry is a basically a way to avoid that, especially for teams. It runs natively in the browser, and it lets you preview, organize, and share 3D files instantly. Whatever format you're working with, Blender, Maya, or USD, it just works. It has an AI-powered search engine, so you can look up assets even with just a description. There's also a built-in versioning to easily track changes and share with whoever without needing to upload it again. So avoid the mess, save time, and cost by using Blueberry AI. It is built for teams, but there is a freemium version for solo artists. Think of it as a Dropbox, but for 3D collaboration, equipped with a 3D engine and powerful search and organizing tools. So what are you waiting for? Check out Blueberry right now by clicking the link in the description down below. Pixar actually used Maya for years, but not for everything. In their pipeline, Maya's role was mostly modeling, creating characters, props, and environments. Once models were built, the actual animation work happened in Pixar's proprietary system called Memvi, also known as Marionette in public interviews. Marionette has been in use from Toy Story in 1995 all the way through Toy Story 3 in 2010. Over that time, it had been adapted to handle increasingly complex films. For example, when The Incredibles needed Elastic Girl's body to stretch in ways the original system couldn't handle, Pixar's engineers added that ability directly into the software. That level of customization was a big reason Pixar didn't switch entirely to Maya, or another off-the-shelf program. You see, commercial tools are closed source, so you don't simply re-engineer core features overnight. But by the late 2000s, Marionette was built on a code base over two decades old, and expanding it had become difficult, and big changes risked breaking the entire system. At the same time, Pixar's films were growing in scale. A single shot might contain billions of polygons, far beyond what most animation software could handle, especially interactively back in the day. Even without powerful workstations and high-end GPUs, animators had to work with simplified proxy characters that lacked fur, detailed textures, or cloth effects. The real look of the shot only appeared after a render, which made animation a slower, trial-and-error process. By the time a movie called Ratatouille wrapped up in 2007, Pixar knew that they would need a complete replacement for Marionette to handle their next generation of films. Maya is extremely capable, there's no doubt about that. So you might wonder why they didn't rely on it directly. Well, Pixar's demands go well beyond the average production. They needed animation tools that could show characters in millions of hairs or complex clothes in real time, in addition to supporting numerous scene files and allowing deep customization of rigs. Maya's rigging and deformation system is actually pretty good but it didn't meet Pixar's desire of class system for rigs. The ability to create a master rig and propagate changes to hundreds of variant characters. In addition to this, 
large crowd scenes or productions with many costume variations made that kind of system actually essential. Pixar also had to consider how much control they had over their own tools. You see, relying entirely on Maya for animation meant being tied to Autodesk release schedules in addition to their priorities. Adding a new deformation method or integrating a custom simulation tool, for example, would require Autodesk cooperation or building complex plugins that could only go so far. In short, neither Marionette nor Maya could deliver the real-time, deeply integrated, endlessly customizable animation environment that Pixar's pipeline needed. Right after Ratatouille, Pixar started a multi-year project to build a new animation system from the ground up. Internally, it was called Presto, named partly after Pixar's 2008 magician-themed short film. The development team, led by engineers like Dirk van Gelder, spent about five years creating it. They even collaborated with Autodesk to ensure it worked smoothly with Maya, especially for Maui. But the goal for Presto was to become the central hub for rigging, animation, layout, and simulation. The plan was to keep the most efficient workflows from Marionette while replacing the entire underlying code base. This would remove the technical limitations that had built up over two decades, while also allowing the system to grow for years to come. Presto debuted in production on Brave. This meant that the film's animators, riggers, and simulation artists were using an entirely new code system, which was a big risk, but one that Pixar considered necessary. Animators saw a shift in the viewport, and Pixar collaborated with NVIDIA to make use of modern GPU processing, allowing characters to display in real time with fur, textures, shadows, and simulation data visible during animation. On Monsters University, an animator could post Sully and see his 900,000 hairs move instantly in the viewport. This wasn't possible in Marionette or Maya at the time. It meant animators no longer had to guess how fur or cloth would look like until they saw the renders. Presto's rigging system was also redesigned. It became a class-based rig structure. This means a base rig could fit into many variations, with changes cascading automatically. For crowd scenes, the safe days or weeks of repetitive adjustments. Setup tools also improved. For example, riggers could fill a character model with a simulated volume like jelly, to auto-generate skin weights and muscle shapes, and facial rigging could automatically balance blend shapes, avoiding tedious manual tweaks. Presto also integrated closely with Pixar's in-house simulation system for cloth, hair, and muscles. Animators could see how Mirai does curls or a horse's muscle flags would look like while they were animating, rather than only after simulation passes. Later during the short piper, Pixar added the press to sculpting brush. This tool let animators sculpt deformations directly on a character in a shot, similar to working in ZBrush, and animate those sculpt changes over time. It gave artists a direct, hands-on way to refine shapes that big controls couldn't easily achieve. Early versions of Presto couldn't make multi-artist collaboration on the same scene at least not easily. Pixar solved this by developing Universal Scene Description, or USD for short, which has since been open sourced and adopted across the whole industry. USD lets different artists work on separate layers of a scene, including animation, cameras, set dressing, in addition to other things, and then merge them non-destructively. Presto was adapted to work with USD, with greatly improved efficiency on large productions. Brave was Presto's first test in a feature film. The film's complex hair, cloth, and character rigs pushed the software from day one. Pixar had said the characters in Brave were the most complex they'd ever made at the time. On Monsters University, Presto's strength became even more apparent. Animators could work with multiple fully detailed characters in the same shot, with real-time shadows and simulations visible. This sped up the creative process and reduce technical surprises late in production. 
Also inside out, use Presto's capabilities to push exaggerated squash and stretch character designs while keeping everything visible in the viewport. In addition to this, Finding Dory handled vast underwater crowds, and Piper relied on the sculpting brush for ultra-precise feather animations. By 2018, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences recognized Presto with a Technical Achievement Award, noting how it had significantly increased animator productivity. I think that Pixar's investment in software such as Presto reflects an industry pattern, to be honest, which means they are facing the same problems. Studios such as DreamWorks, ILM, WhatFX, and Disney often develop proprietary tools when commercial software cannot meet the scale or specific tasks related to their creative process or what they want to do in general. The motivation is usually a mix of factors, like the ability to add features that they actually need right now in the moment, and the option to design tools that integrate seamlessly with in-house renderers and asset management systems. In addition to the advantage of workflows or certain visual techniques that cannot be replicated in other software, for example, DreamWorks Primo and Disney's custom toolset for films like Frozen follow the same principle. Like Presto, they allow artists to work directly with fully detailed assets in real time, reducing uncertainty and avoiding the back and forth when it comes to testing renders. The trade-off, as you can imagine, is the high cost and complexity of developing and maintaining such software, because as I said before, Presto took five years of engineering and effort, and it also required constant updates from a dedicated team. But for a studio producing multiple large-scale films, which generate billions of dollars each year, I think the long-term benefits overweigh the investment. Since Brave, every Pixar feature and short has been animated in Presto. The software continues to evolve, which is expected, with new features like machine learning assisted posing and improved cropped animation tools which are being previewed at industry events. Some of the technology developed alongside Presto, including USD and OpenSubdiv, has been released publicly, which I think is a good thing and a great thing for the industry at large, which means even if you don't use Presto, which is almost impossible unless you work for Pixar, you might be benefiting from it indirectly through other software. So the general consensus is that Presto isn't about replacing Maya for the sake of being different. It was about building an environment where Pixar's animators could work directly with the full complexity of their characters and scenes without technical barriers slowing them down. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.